guys, my videos haven't been as regular as I want them to be. It's just because life has a way of getting in the way when this can't be a full-time job. But if we push all of that aside, here is some fun gameplay that I had recently playing my beloved Green and Taxes. And stop calling it fucking hate bears, okay? It's not hate bears. My people prefer the term death and taxes. So the current deck list looks a lot like this. Uh, the only sort of new additions really is playing Selfless Spirit in the main. It allows us to develop a large board so having to fear Anger of the Gods or Wrath of God. It also means that electrolyzes instead sort of blow out in some less situations too. It allows us to favor blue block against decks that play huge creatures like Suicide Zoo and Neo Brazi. So I keep a slightly wanky hand which will allow me to ramp into the turn 2 Blade Splicer and then use a turn 3 Restoration Angel to widen my board. Uh, this will be good against most fair decks but leave me vulnerable to faster decks in the format or open to being tripped up by a lightning bolt to my door. On turn 2 my opponent plays a lead wanker, revealing that we're up against some form of hex proof or bubbles plan. Our hand cannot interact with this deck or, or its plan in any meaningful way at present, which means I am not overconfident about this game, so our only plan at this stage is just to race it. And I shock myself for literally no reason at all and play a Blade Spicer on turn two. I am not here to fuck around, Sonny Jim. I'm here to make golems and chew bubblegum and I'm all out of gum. My opponent plays nothing on turn 2, he's just that his hand is full of expensive cards or things that interact with us as opposed to his own creatures. He confirms this by pathing my golem token in combat on my turn. He then untaps and plays a Griff Spoon, which he must have just drawn, I thought he'd played it already, and a Daybreak Coronet, which represents a clock we cannot race on his little boggle like creature. I flick a mine splicer to create a larger board presence in Zen Step using my Restoration Angel. He surprise blocks my 1 1 splicer during combat with a Dryad Arbor from an open fetch, which is a lot of play I did not see coming at all. Ethereal Armor and Daybreak Coronet number 2 attached to his Ledge Walker, which I block with my Spirit and sacrifice to avoid the life gain for that turn. I then eternal witness my Spirit back in order to be able to fog another attack for a turn. This doesn't really get us anywhere closer to winning, so we go to game 2. Right, so Boggles isn't the best matchup for this deck. I don't really enjoy playing against it without spell skites available, but I haven't got it in the ball for this this build. So I board in 2 Reclamation Sage, 2 Kitchen Finks, 1 Idol of Vetric, and an Engine of Explosives. Blowing up enchantments and surviving in order to blow up more enchantments is basically our plan here. I long can stop explosive later turns off of a spirit dancer and generally close them down in the earlier turns. I cut four paths to exile which leaves me open to struggling with deal, to deal with spell sky or core spirit dancer if he's playing them but the cards are dead the vast majority of the time against the deck and do nothing against his hexproof creatures. So it's a risk I'm willing to take. I drop two screws that are too slow and have minimal impact in this matchup. I also, for some reason at this point, switch a Tectonic Edge for a Gaffney Township as a concession to the speed and effectiveness of Edge versus Township in most matchups where I care about them just beating me down too quickly. However, in, with hindsight, I prefer Gaffney to reset my Finks in rare corner cases here as Tech Edge will have almost no utility whatsoever. Oh, I keep a slightly better hand this time round, a two land up with a Dork an Arbiter which will slow him down or possibly win the game off of a drawn Ghost Quarter and a Double resto, double Wisp and a Resto which means we can get cute with taking the pants of his Boggles mid-combat. Uh, other than seeing no sideboard cards off of his hand, it's pretty solid. There's nothing quite like taking pants off a Boggle to get me going. He plays a turn one Boggle in the form of a Glade Cover Scout. It isn't quite as sexy as your usual Boggle but it gets the job done nonetheless. I deploy another Dork and an Arbiter and brace myself for the opponent's turn two. I haven't really interacted with him or have any way to interact with him so I'm kind of a little bit scared that he's just going to wallop me for a million. It appears the Boggles player has kept a one lander. This kind of thing is quite common with a deck that Mulligan's pretty awkwardly like Boggles. Uh, this is a good news for us because it means that if he has, it draws into a fetch land from here, Arbiter punishes his already greedy hand more so than normal. He applies some spider shaped pantyos and passes the turn back to me. Given the choice to Gavany or further develop the width of my board, I choose to whisk my Arbiter out and back in post combat. This Boggles player hits his second untapped non fetch land and applies a coronet to match his snazzy spider pants. He makes a 10 point life total swing with his vigilant spider like life linking reaching hexproof elf, which doesn't feel fantastic. We untap and whisk off his spider pants and cause his daybreak coronet to also fall off. We then hit him upside the head with our creatures. He finds protection from creatures and is happy to block the following turn 
However, Restoration Angel allows us to take this protection away using one of our wisps, and it concedes that Stalia is going to kill his only creature. We go to game three. I think this game in particular really illustrates how good Flicker Wisp and Friends can be at answering so many questions with the magic, even questions you didn't know you were going to face today, like how to take spider pants off of an elf. Uh, despite being on the draw, I make no changes to my cyborg plan going into game three. I see a hand of tapped coloured sources, a vial, and three drops galore, and decide that this will just get me killed, and it's too slow. I throw it back, I keep a six with a dork, a vial, a cat Jesus, and Captain Flickery Man himself, Eldrazi Displacer. The scroll reveals that Blade Spicer wants to come and play, so I keep it on top of the library. Aside from Spirit Mantle and flying, Splicer's tokens match up very, very well against the threats Boggles deploy. Turn one Boggle from them, and turn one Dork from us. He untaps and suits up with two different pairs of pants and twats me for four. I deploy Arbiter as a speed bump and decide to get my 8th of Iron Line ASAP. Vile is a bit slow in this matchup, much like it can be for Burn and Affinity. However, unlike those matchups, Instant Speed, Rex Sages, and Wisps can literally turn the tide of the entire match, so the, the Vile stay in post ball. Mr. Boggles decides to deploy a second Boggle and hit us with his already panted up first Boggle without making it any bigger. I decide not to block the measly 4 damage, preferring to use Arbiter to negate more damage later. I am a little bit scared that he might suit up the other Boggle too, and kind of hope that he keeps it all in on, on the one bo big Boggle plan that he can make evasive, because that will play better to our plans. I slam Blade Spice after drawing a Wisp, only to have the Golem parved, and may not be able to find a land due to my own Arbiter. I find this rather depressing, sometimes Cat Jesus can be a harsh mistress. The time has come, Cat Jesus will sacrifice himself to absolve us of our sins. The Jesus metaphor kind of falls short there, as he throws himself under a bus um, to get us to live longer. There's no crosses involved or any other religious iconography. Our Exalted Splicer gets in for two points of damage, and then we reset him with Wisp. We are entering what I call squeaky bum time now. We have no way of dealing directly with the opponent's Boggle. Next turn we can buy into Splicer with enough amount to activate him, allowing us to get cute with the Wisp, or make more Golems. However, if this Boggle's player slams a Coronet, or some sort of protection from creatures, or unblockable or flying effect, we are up shit creek without a paddle. The correct turn for this moment is the 5p to 50p moment. I have explained this terminology on the channel before, but for those of you that aren't regulars, uh, hit the subscribe button now so you can see more content from me in the future. But to explain, uh, imagine this is your arsehole, okay, like this, this is your bumhole. Uh, this is a 5p, so this is when you are clenching. This is a 50p. Most people are a bit loose normally, not like poo falling out, but just like normal. It clenches right up into the size of a 5p when you're kind of breaking it and like sort of like, please don't have that card, please don't have that card, and then they don't have a card and then everything's fine. Anyway, he paths the wisp, which although not ideal, puts us on one colourless land away from double displaced activations when we untap. A reclamation stage at the top or a colourless land at the top of the library become very, very lively. We throw our disposable golden buddies under the bus to live another day as his bubble gets bigger and bigger. He is all in on the draw the evasion plan, which is fine by us because we can then block it one for one as we displace and flicker our blade splicer. We draw a forest, which is not very useful, it's possibly one of the worst draws at this point in time. Splicer gets into the combat zone and then we pass back with displacer and mana for activation ready off of a vial. Then we execute the plan displaced to make a golem and block with said golem. We are alive, albeit with a squeaky clenched bum hole still. We untap and find that magical second colour source. Let the fun and games begin. We end up winning the game with 36 power golems on board. Ultimately, I feel that this just shows how good Blaze Blaster can be with the combination of Flicker abilities. Ultimately, I feel that Boggles is not a great matchup for the deck. The optimum Boggles draw will often, if not always, trump and outpace the optimum draw we will have. Sometimes you will win these matches by being patient and playing to your outs. Sometimes they just won't get there and won't draw the card they need, like the payoff. So remember that the next time you lose, you don't draw the right card for the situation. Variance is a two-way street. It's a harsh mistress. Fucking hates us all. Thanks for watching. If you have any comments or anything to say about the gameplay, the deck itself, or any ideas for future content on the channel, drop a comment below. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to see more content. I'll put a link up on the screen here for some more gameplay involving deck and taxes, and a link to some video here of me opening some product with my good friend John the Baptist. Anyway, thanks for watching, and as usual, one love for the hip hop streets, one love for modern white deck and taxes. With a bit of greed.